The Flash, 763, uh, Kevin Shinnick and Clayton Henry on the art. Uh, this is, of course, a fill-in uh, art, uh, writer, even. Uh, artist as well, I suppose, technically, but, I mean, <laughs> it's uh, less of a, a point to make in this one, I guess. What's interesting about this is that I assume this was going to be, like, a two-parter or something, because the writers are for, like, two issues, right? Uh, I don't know. Is Flash tying into Endless Winter stuff? It is, yeah. So it's only got a couple issues, and then... A handful, yeah. Yeah, uh, four tops, I think. Um, but it's actually quite... St- I mean, it does tease the next issue at the end, but it's, it's a pretty standalone story. I it is, say. yeah. Um, I, I will say, I, I groaned on the very first... The very first panel. Hey, yeah, I read the preview, and I was like, I don't know if I want to read this. <laughs> like, because- the, the very first panel talks about, yeah, the anniversary of his mother's death. I was like, oh, not again. Do, do, do I need this? Uh- no, I, I will concur that I, I did get a little worried when we started talking about this uh, again. Um, so, so I actually, I did enjoy this story for the most part. I have, I d- I'm, I'm not always in love with the art, I'll say that. Uh, the faces are a bit in the, the overly caricature side. side. Yeah, uh, not in love with those. So what's weird about it is that the story is basically about how he speeds off and then realizes after a while that his ring is gone. Someone has basically pickpocketed his ring <laughs> uh, from him. and. It's about him looking for his ring, and it really it's important to him. And Iris is like, "We well, can't just make a new one," and he's like, "No, I can't." Even though it's, we're all thinking, "Yeah, well, you probably could." Uh, so obviously, it has some sort of sentimental value. Which obviously, at the end of the story, he he reveals to Iris what that value is. But what I liked about this is that it was just going for a fun story uh, with a bit of heart at the end. Uh, it involved trickster, and I kind of liked the the start of the trickster stuff where it's like. Trixie's like, no, no, I've not done anything criminal. I, I've opened a, a, you know, a beachside attraction where people can get some I'm food. I'm a legitimate businessman. I think what he called, yeah. what does he say? Yeah, he gets more money selling overpriced chicken wings than, than yeah. he does in crime. And he's, you know, it's like an arcade, sells some fast food. And Flash goes in, and there's like a one of those grabber, you know, machines that says like, "Win the Flash's ring." And it's like, okay, <laughs> so somehow Trickster swiped the ring, and it's in this arcade machine. And I was like, okay, this is kind of amusing. It's kind of funny what, what they're tackling with this. My problem with this story, though, is that it kept adding more layers to it that I didn't think it needed to add. Because after this, it's like, okay, then he's got supervillains bidding on what Flash is going to, like, how quickly Flash can do things. And then it becomes a VR thing where they're not actually there and it's other people yeah. with goggles. I don't think it was supervillains bidding on things. It was just regular people bidding on how quickly he did. Okay, things. sorry. It was regular people bidding on how he was doing things. But then there was supervillains showing up. But then it turned out the supervillains were actually just VR and it was and, like regular people with VR goggles on pretending to be the Riddler and these other smart yeah, characters. Yeah, they're, they're playing a game and they're, they're yeah. using them as the characters to try and outsmart the Flash. And and it, it, yeah, it keeps adding things. I'm like, just stop, slow down. Yeah, it just because it, I actually I thought the voice for Barry and the pacing of the dialogue in the story was because this was a, a first time writer for me. I'd never written read anything, anything by this writer. And as I was reading, I was, oh, this actually has a quite good flow to it, you know, from the writing point of view. The only problem I have with it is conceptually is they kept adding more things to make it more complicated. I'm like, no, honestly, when this was just the trickster has his ring in an arcade machine, that was amusing, and I was into that story. <laughs> Go back to that, please. Yeah, no, I'm right there with you. Uh, <laughs> there was a handful of things that fell a little bit off in the dialogue. Um, like, at the end, when he gets back, and mm. I was just like, oh, I forgot it was that day. And and he's like, well, maybe now we can also think of it as the day he got his ring back. It's like, Barry, mate, you ain't remembering this in a year's time. No. Um, and also, there was a weird colouring issue on that particular panel. Uh, he's, he's holding the ring up, and it's it's red uh, on the top instead of white. And it's yeah, repeatedly showed it. Even the, the page before, uh, oh, it's sure. white. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's about odd. Um, yeah, it just keeps adding more things. We find out the reason why the ring means so much to him, you know, beyond just it having a suit in it, because he can make more of those, obviously. Is that he actually made it out of his mother and his father's wedding rings? Uh, he 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 fused them together, made the ring out of that. So it's got a lot of sentimental value. Uh, and it, you know, it's it's one of those things where we keep going back to you know the death of his mother, or we keep going back to the death of you know the Waynes or, or whatever. We do this a lot in comics, and that part does make me groan a little bit. But given that most of it is just a fun, let's find the ring story, I'm into that idea. It just gets far too complex, you know. Because it, when it showed up, but it was like, wait, Riddler's here and Prankster and like. I'm like, what? What? Where are these all come from? This feels like extreme for this little mini plot. It, it was like it, it kept trying to throw a new twist into the story, like every three I, pages. <laughs> I almost appreciated that. Oh no, they're not real because I was because I was questioning. I was like, why are these all involved here? Yeah. And it felt weird. And then and then it was like, oh, they're they're not. I was like, oh, okay. But then I'm like, 
But now we're doing VR? Yeah, and it went back to the bidding, because they were still bidding stuff by making them do stuff with the, the, the fake villains. So, I mean, it was one of those things where I kind of appreciated the audacity of it by a point where I'm like, I started laughing at how much was been added, but I, st- I stopped like enjoying it as a story at that point and just this, started laughing at how crazy it was. It, it could have been a three-issue arc on its own, with each one of these things getting its <laughs> own issue dedicated to it. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, but yeah, so he explains all this to Iris. Sweet enough moment, you know, it's all right. Um, and then at the end, you know, because they were teasing Dr. Alchemy before. Uh, so this is just the, at the end, Dr. Alchemy's like, yes, I'm going to strike now. Next issue. <laughs> pretty much. That's pretty much it. Uh, like I say, art is not particularly to my taste and how it, how the artist draws faces particularly. I think, I think I like it more than you do. I'm, I've am i I've read enough of Clayton Henry's stuff now that I've kind mm. of... Uh, adjusted uh, I'm, I'm just kind of used to seeing his you know long foreheads yep. uh elongated flash helmet in, you know in the thing i've, I've kind of just gotten used to it it varies page to page because i think the last page with uh dr alchemy i thought that, i think that looks fine that's a fine page i have nothing wrong with that page yeah i think it's it's usually particularly noticeable uh when barry's got the 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 cowl on and it's a front-facing shot, it can look like his head's really long. Or if he's running and he's got his head down, it feels like it goes back too far. Um, I do think Iris's face always looks a little bit off. But sometimes it's worse than others. There's one really bad example early on in the book when he's with her at the, the farmer's market, uh, which she's making him do because he dragged her to a, an arcade lunch. <laughs> which is where he lost the ring. Which is where he lost the ring, yes. Because uh, it was swiped. I do like the idea yeah. of someone being able to swipe Barry's ring off of him without him noticing, even though he should be able to sense that because he's the Flash and everything's hyperspeed and whatnot. You, you would think he just wasn't paying attention. He, he mm-hmm. was too busy worrying about his wings. Yes. Uh, I suppose that makes sense some, in a way. No, I mean, everyone gets distracted by wings. What, what are you giving Flash? Uh, I'm giving it a 6.5. It's solid. Uh, it's enjoyable enough, but it's, it's mired in just a handful of things that just drag it down for me. Yeah, I'll probably just go to straight six. I, I think I, I don't regret reading it. There's some fun stuff in there, uh, some nice ideas, but there's also it's, too many ideas. Uh, I didn't love the art, so it's also the sort of book where, if the next couple of issues are coming out on busy weeks, uh, maybe I won't read this until the the endless winter issues. Who knows? Um, but but also if it's a quieter week, I'm not opposed to, to reading it either. Sure. 